Right, we're going to start this show by pointing out we know there's only been one game. <laughs> we are not reading everything into... Well, we are reading everything into this mm. one game, but that's only because that's all we have to work mm -hmm. on in terms of the action that we've seen. Given that, how impressive were Man yeah, United? Very impressive. They're brilliant. It's how, it's how you'd expect... It's what it's, when I used to play against United, that's how they started. You went there on the first day of the season. Obviously, it's a full house. And you're hoping that they're not ready to go. Um, I think Leeds played into their hands a bit, but you can't take anything from United doing that man-to-man -man with these players. Because as soon as you lose them, it's over for you. But it was as close to a Man United back in the day than I've ever seen. I'm not saying that that's what they have to do, but they, would, they, were, they just looked imperious, man. It just looked so good. There's a lot of optimism from Manchester United fans ahead of this season. And part of that is because they're back in the ground as well. And that contributes to that whole kind of old-school feeling for Manchester United. Of course, yeah. And I think with the signings Ollie's made as well, um, I think Oli's made his mind out. He wants Manchester United to be very attacking this season, get back to the old Manchester United. You know, um, got old-fashioned wingers, so to speak, uh, creativity in midfield. And when you've got Bruno in the form he's been in, you know, carrying on to this season, you're going to get goals, and that's what they produced last weekend. Yeah, and they, they do go out on the front foot under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. In fact, he's been, there have been more games miles more games in which they've scored five or more goals under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer than under David Moyes, Louis van Gaal or Jose Mourinho. It's, it's just, it seems to be a strike-first mentality. If you wind the clock back to December 2018, their very first game on the interim Ole Gunnar Solskjaer against Cardiff was a 5-1. And what was interesting there was Wayne Rooney gave a little comment about the difference about playing under Solskjaer, what that would be like compared to playing under Mourinho. And he said, under Mourinho, you only really attack with two or three players, where Solskjaer very clearly wants four or five. Yeah. And you saw some of these goals against Leeds United, Pogba's interlinking yeah. with Bruno, who's interlinking with Mason Greenwood, Scott McTominay's not too far behind. They get at you with numbers and at mm. speed. Yeah, it is. And, and to, for a striker to play in that sort of setup, I've put someone else's teeth in today. For a striker to play in that sort of setup, it, it's just, it, it's, all, it's all there for you. It's all been created for you. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's quite, it was quite frightening to, to see. And even with, even with Lindelof's pass, it seems like everybody, everybody who's playing, and it re, like I say, it reminds me of back in the day, is that everybody who gets on the ball from, for the Man United side is looking to do some form of damage to you. And when you've got the runners, like, like the, the, the Greenwood goal was, was perfect, um, where... You know, you give somebody like Pogba that much time and space and he'll hit a pass that you don't see very frequently. Maybe Kevin De Bruyne might be able to do that as well. But he done it with so... It was so lax and so calm and so beautiful. Onto a fully... Full-paced Mason Greenwood was straight catching him. And it, it, was, it was beautiful to watch. So what you see with United, where the game is, is stretched and it's end-to-end, -end, Man United in that format, unstoppable, because they've got so many players in the moment, Bruno, you know, Pogba, Greenwood, you know, Sancho and even started yet, no, no Rashford. You've got so many players in, in the moment that will hurt you if you're trying to attack and they get the moments and then they'll punish you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Paul Pogba, four assists in that victory for, for him. And after a, a slightly unsettled summer for him, he's come in, he's started the season, all guns blazing. Is this a sign of what we can expect from him this season consistently? I, I, I think with Paul, yeah. Um, I think he's carried his form on from the Euros. I thought in the Euros he was absolutely fantastic. But we, we all know his passing ability. We, know, we all know he's very creative and can score goals as well. But I think on Saturday he proved to everyone just how good a player he is. And people are starting to disrespect him a little bit too much. You know, saying, oh, four assists. Yeah, he's got four assists. But what else? Mm. He has brought quality. And he'll continue to do that this season, yeah? We're not sure if he's going to sign a new contract at Manchester United, but you have to enjoy him if he's not going to be at Manchester United come next season. But the thing is, is, um, is that people talk about the contract, and even when he had the problems with Riola and, and Oli, when he's, he, was, he was shouting off his mouth a bit, the, the, the agent, Pogba still played good football. Mm. And you're looking at Pogba now, even with all, all players now. I remember Arsene Wenger said it a few years ago, all players will be looking to put tracks down. It's not something that's a bad thing. It's just that players know that that's an opportunity. Pogba's not... It's not affected the way Pogba's playing. He's still bringing everything. And what he's, what he's proven to Man United now is, is that whether he wants to move or not, I don't think for me at the moment, especially with Varane coming the other way, if somewhere like Real Madrid or Barcelona is better than where he is right now. And mm. so what he's doing, he's playing a brand of football that he probably, hopefully, for Man United fans, 
will realise, well, yeah, I, w I want to be here. But at the same time, people have got to stop talking about, oh, he's only got a year left. Because they're going to constantly talk about yeah, of contract, if he plays well, if he doesn't play well. <clears throat> Whereas Pogba just gets on and does that. Yeah. That's a brilliant start to the season for him. That changing landscape in football and that shift in power yeah. is something we're going to come on to in, mm -hmm. in a bit more detail later on. But on Paul Pogba and the way he's, he's started this season with that opening game, and as Andrew said, you know, picking up from the form that he had in, in the Euros, <coughs> nobody's, nobody's saying that he's not capable <coughs> of those performances. What they're saying is, will we see them, not every week, but most weeks? Yes, and that always remains the, the difficult thing about the sort of on-his-day performance from Paul Pogba still doesn't quite guarantee you a win. If you think about, for me, Paul Pogba was the best player at the Euros up until that game against Switzerland yeah. goes through extra time mm. and then it all sorts of implodes a little bit. Yeah. Pogba played well against Leeds because Leeds, with that man-marking system, gave him space. You know, Bruno Fernandes was being marked by Robin Kosh and Bruno Fernandes sort of dropped deep and gave extra space for Paul Pogba. And if you give Pogba enough space on the ball, he's going to... Yeah put that ball wherever he wants to, and it's fantastic. And I think that goal for Mason Green was, was exemplary in terms of giving a bit of space, and he can not only move the defender, but he can also move the player mm -hmm. and create the vision. That's going to be fine against a team like Leeds United. That's going to be good against teams that want to come on to Manchester United. I think their home record will improve this season because teams will want to try and basically be repelled by whatever attacking call that United throw on. It's when United play against teams that want to drop deep, that want to defend deep and don't want to come out that's where the difficulty comes for Paul Pogba. We know Pogba, like a lot of players that are over six foot, doesn't really like it when two players come to press him. So he hasn't had great games at Southampton, which will be interesting because Southampton are a high pressing team. If Ralph Arsenal was watching Pogba, he's got to go send two lads up on him and see what happens next. Yeah, see well, what happens. Yeah, but then, you, then, then surely um, the signing of someone like Sancho, mm -hmm. because of us, jump the gun here. No, Okay. Go. Um, the signing of someone like Sancho, who the same for me like, as Grealish at City. He, can, he gives you a different problem when he mm. gets on the ball if team's going to stay deep, man. So what happens is he has got, no, he'll take players out of the game with skills. I think that this is one of the biggest like, factors for me for United this season. We know their left side is brilliant, what Luke Shaw does. You know, when Rashford's playing, everything comes from that side for some reason. And the right-hand side is the percentages. I would love to see what the percentages of the goals created from this side is. I just, I'm sure it'd be a lot a lot further behind than the left. Jaden Sancho will bring that right up. And he'll also bring that problem what Carl has, um, has, has highlighted, which is a problem for United, creating that when people are doing that low block. And I think that he's somebody that now, he'll take players out of the game with skills going into boxes, more free kicks, more opportunities to get the ball in the box for people like Harry Maguire and maybe Varane. So I feel that they've slowly just they're slowly just sorting out all their, all their problems. More options. Yeah. Mm. More Maybe that, that no. holding midfielder, Carl, at some stage, I'm sure they're going to get that person. But at the moment, you're seeing everything in that performance. And you're right to say it, Kels. It's only one, it's only one, it's only one game. But they've started with a kind of a, a, an attitude that makes me think, right, they're, they're, they're here to play. Yeah, I, I think Manchester United are better as well when they don't play with two holders. Mm. I mean, I think when you're at home, you can't play with two holders. Yeah. Not Old Trafford. Yeah. You no, know, with the quality that they have, you don't need two holders, man. Yeah, man. You're going to dominate the game. You know, naturally, when you come against the bigger teams, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. But at Old Trafford, you've got to go for it. It's as simple as that. That's the way we've been brought up. Yeah, I, I remember, you were, I think it was the first time you, you came on this show and you talked about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and what his blueprint might mm -hmm. be. And you were looking back at that classic team that, that Solskjaer played in. Are they close, bringing Sancho in? Are they now closer to kind of creating that setup? I think they're as close as they've ever been. Uh, after the victory against Leeds, I did ask Solskjaer sort of how he develops Mason Green when I said, when you've got, I'm assuming you want to one day make the striker, when do you add an extra bit to his game? And then Solskjaer looked at me and went, who told you I want to make him a striker? <laughs> and I got very embarrassed. And he, goes, <laughs> he, and he said, no, so you said Greenwood plays on the left, he can play on the right, you look at his goal that came on the left-hand side, he can play in all these positions. And then I went, well, do you want him to play in all these positions? And he said, yeah, yeah, I want all, he goes, everyone apart from Cavani, Cavani's the only fixed striker. And then he mentioned... Carlos Tevez, Wayne Rooney. Mm. And yeah, but I, I don't think Mace. I don't think Mace actually wants to play as a centre forward. No, no. You know, uh, that's, that's a tough, that is a difficult, difficult role. To be a number nine, that's, that's pressure. And if you play off the left or right, it's, it's different. But being a number nine at Old Trafford, yeah. I thought what was interesting was he mentioned the 07, 08 team, which when I was here before, I said. I think he wants to do that. Mm. And he was the forwards coach in 07, a little mm. bit, mm. towards the end of that season, before he became the reserve team coach. And I think he's always had it in his mind. Could he create 
a front three that was a bit like Rooney, Ronaldo and Tevez. Mm. And they're getting closer. I think San Jaden Sancho is the sort of Ronaldo-esque right-sided player that can go into loads of positions. Greenwood is just sort of Tevez-esque where he's a bit more of a striker, but you can also play on both sides. Mm. And then we know Marcus Rashford grew up watching Wayne Rooney and he adores watching Wayne Rooney and has that sort of very selfless streak where you can move him into all those sorts of positions. Mm. So there is a version of a United front three where you have that front three and they're all constantly changing positions. And I think that's a nightmare to play against if you're the yeah. opposition team. Yeah, really difficult to, to play against. But mm. for Mason Greenwood, like you, as you said, not, if he doesn't want that that fixed number nine position, is he is he better suited to, to playing in that in that more flexible role? I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think with, with Mason's talent, you know, he, he's forced that he can play across the arm, um, the line, you know, centre forward, left or right. But listening to like some of the coaches, Fletch and people like that, who I speak to, I don't think he's fixed on playing as a number nine. You know. Like I said, number nine is it's tough. And as a, such a young State kid... State of mind. Exactly. As such yeah. a young kid, you know, to be Manchester United's number nine at that age, it's, it's hard work. Well, I think now Cravani, and if you listen to the noises Oli's making, you know, come next season, you know, then we're looked to buy, for instance, a Haaland or a Kane if he's still available. I think they're looking long-term, right? Mace won't be a number nine, but he'll play. But they want a number nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's not doing too badly in terms of, of goals scored, though, Mason Greenwood, mm. and, and compared to, to other teenagers in the Premier League. I mean, he's, he's up there, maybe not with the, the very best out-and-out -out strikers who are hitting sort of numbers of, of 30 or so. Mm. But given that he only has until the 1st of October and then he's no longer a teenager, yeah. he's, a, he's at 18 there behind, yeah. behind Nicholas and Elka. Um, I think that when you look at what Mason Greenwood's doing there, it, for the, the numbers are amazing. Because you look at... Of course, Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, unbelievable. And Michael Owen's career was so front-loaded, yes, wasn't it? Was it was very front-loaded. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what they haven't had to go, on, go through, what Mason Green has gone through, is being at Man United from a young age all the way to get through that academy into the first team and then start putting up numbers like he's putting up and then putting in performances like we saw um, against Leeds at the start of the season. And if, if that's something, to, uh, uh, a sign of things to come, then it's going to be frightening what he's going to end up doing because... He's, he's done a lot of hard work just getting where he is. Mm. And he's got there under a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's under a lot of pressure because it just comes with the territory of United. And he seems to be dealing with it now, sorting out all the stuff or else, all the other stuff was going on with him. And he just seems ready now. And so I feel that it's, it's not long, he's going to be blasting fast all of those numbers. I think off as well. Mm. Mm. I think that's really helped. Just to get him yeah. prepared and mentally, physically fit. Yeah, and... mentally as well, fit, and then physically comes back pre-season. He can really crack on. So Mesa Greenwood can really crack on for Manchester United, and certainly they've taken the approach that attack is the best form of defence. But with their latest signing, maybe they think defence is also the best form of defence. Here's Rafael Varane. How does Thank it you. feel to be able to call yourself a Manchester United player? I'm very happy and very excited to start. Uh, this new journey for me. Um, it was a, a, a very, very good adventure with, uh, with my old club, but now it's a new start for me and I'm, I'm very happy to, to be here. You learned Spanish as soon as you arrived at Madrid. How is your English? It sounds great, but how is it for you? No, it's, uh, it's difficult for me to do this interview in, in English, but I have to try. I think it's very important um, to be uh, close uh, to the fans because uh, we have the same objective, we have to fight together and um, it's important for me to be comfortable with my teammates, uh, with the coach and um, uh, it's important for me for my life and for my professional life too. Talk us through the timeline. When did you realise that a move here to Manchester United was going to happen for you? Yeah, uh, I think um, there have been uh, a lot of rumours, uh, a lot of people speaking about, uh, about me and, and Manchester United since uh, 2011, um, when uh, Sir Alex Ferguson came in my mother's house and um, I think uh, when, when it was real, it's uh, when I, I spoke with my, my club and uh, I feel a, a real opportunity to play in Premier League and for Manchester United.
What a signing for Manchester mm. United. Three La Liga titles, one Copa del Rey, four Champions League, three Super Cups, four World Cups, uh, uh, sorry, one World Cup and four Club World Cups. I mean, apart from that, mm. <laughs> apart from that, what's Rafael Varane ever done? Exactly. <laughs> I think it's a massive coup from, from Man United to get that player from Real Madrid, whatever um, Real Madrid are going through. It doesn't happen. You don't normally get the, the, that player going the other way. You don't get the Real Madrid player coming to Man United. We've seen Ronaldo go across there. We've seen that happen. Um, we've seen Hazard go across there. But for Man United to get him in his prime, with people saying, yeah, well, Real Madrid don't get rid of good players. Well, actually, they, they do, because they just have. <laughs> because for him to go to Man United now, in his prime, it's a mass magnificent signing. He's a top player. It's a real statement of confidence and belief in, in what's, what the future holds at Manchester United as well. Oh, most definitely. And, and for, for Rand to make that move, to leave Real Madrid, if you look at his CV there and what he's achieved, to go to Manchester United and say, right, this is a new challenge for me, something else I want to try, that says it there. You know, he's prepared to move, different club, different culture, move to Manchester United and start all over again. And he, he is a quality player, how, however you look at it. He's going in his prime, like right, he said, but if, if you look at what he can give Manchester United as a centre half, you know, not just for his national team as well, he's been fantastic. He's been the mainstay at Real Madrid for many, many years. And to come to Old Trafford to do just that, I, th I think he'll have a massive career there. Mm. We talked about Jaden Sancho a bit earlier on, but even looking back further into Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfers, with Cavani coming in, with Bruno Fernandes, who'd had, had success in, in Portugal, it seems to be as much about bringing the right mentality into Manchester United as it does about what they bring in terms of their skill sets. Yeah, I, I think to play for Manchester United, you've got to have that winning mentality. You've got to know what it's all about. And like you touched on here, the, the players Ole's trying to bring in, I think he's, he's trying to go what the previous manager used to do under Sir Alex Ferguson. He wanted to know what a player's mentality was before he went out there to go buy them. Do they want to win? You know, mm. what they're like on and off the football pitch. And I think Varane, not I think, I know Varane's a winner. You know, you don't sit at Real Madrid for as long as you have done if you're not a winner. And he knows what that feeling is all about. And like I said, I, I, I think he'd be a massive, massive plus for Manchester United. Yeah. But purely on the aesthetic, he already looks like he belongs. Yes, there's, there's a great moment in, in this video where I think he, he just after he takes his selfie, he goes and he, he has a little embrace with Rio Fan. It almost felt like a passing of the torch in terms of I'm one classic, legendary Manchester United centre-back to, to another. And I think he will offer United much what Rio Ferdinand did. Mm. I think the partnership we'll have with Harry Maguire mm. will be probably... Oh, yeah. They're very well suited. So I think Harry Maguire, very, very good at marking the man. If you've got the... He's a bit like a dog. If you've got the ball, he's going to chase after you and mm. he's going to make sure you're deep as this. Whereas Varane's very good in terms of marking the space and jockeying you and pushing you into areas where you don't want to go to. He'll turn really good goal mm. opportunities into very bad crosses and whatnot. There's also the fact that right, he's quick. He's very, very quick. And if Manchester United want to become a high-pressing team and play with a higher line, if things do go wrong, he'll be the centre-back to clean things up. Mm. So I think that will be really important. In those games where they're playing at home and want to keep the pressure up onto teams that want to hunker down, he'll be probably the last man, while whoever is the goalkeeper will be someone outside the penalty area. Is it, that's going to be an interesting question as well, which we, we will touch on, and, and who is going to be in goal for, for Manchester United across the next, the next couple of seasons. But bringing Varane in, and, and as, as Carl was saying, that matchup with Harry Maguire seems to be like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer starts at the front, starts with goals, mm. and worked his way back. It's not the classic way to go in and, and try and improve a team. It tends to be tends to be going and sort the De sort the defence, and then mm. put the sparkle on at the end. Yeah, well, yeah. But the thing, what, what Man United have had for many years is they've had like the, the forwards have been the, the main stay of Man United. They're the ones Rooney and Ronaldo, and all that. Th those are the guys that have been the ones Andy Cole. You know, Dwight, you, all the people that were up front was what the main focus was with Man United. And recently, obviously, it's, it's, it has changed simply because you need to, you need to have a good defence. You know, I've, I still feel that Aaron Wan-Bissaka is, for me, the best defensive right back in the country. No one's going to change me that. You know, Lindelof can do a good job next to um, Aaron Maguire, which he's done, but you've seen mistakes. But now they've got world class next to Harry Maguire. And for me, Luke Shaw, world class. For me, it's... That's it, it's shored up. Even people talking about the... Andy quite rightly said, playing two, two defensive midfields at home against some teams, the top teams maybe, but now with Varane, you could probably get another offensive midfield player mm -hmm. into the team simply because of his pace. And like Carl said, the way he can see 
the problems with the space. He'll go and mark the space and stop the people trying to maybe get into the places where they're going to try and turn and get at someone like Harry Maguire. So he'll, he'll snuff all that out. So we're talking about a defensive unit now, which kind of matches the front, uh, the front end in respects of quality. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's frightening. And those midfielders who are getting the ball between the yeah. two of them and shuttling it from, shuttling, yeah. from back to front. Yeah, mm. it's, work, it's certainly working for them. And the expectations then realistically high for, for Manchester United for this yeah, season. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, Man United are going to win the league because we won 5 1 against Leeds. But I think it's, it's all positive signs. And, you know, we, we're speaking about Varane coming. I think Paul Pogba's had a lot to do with that as well. So you could possibly look into that and say, would he entice his teammate to come to Man United if you're really thinking about yeah. moving on? Yeah. You know, because he, he must have had a big say because I know the big, the big friends of the national... I mean, when they're in the white national team as well. So I think that's, that's a positive sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's going to be really interesting to look out for across this season is how Manchester United approach those big games against their, their serious rivals. Do you think it's going to be a more aggressive approach? Yes, I don't think we'll have the, the nil-nils against Chelsea, against Manchester City and against Liverpool. I think United will go for broke. Mm. A lot more of those games around allows them to, to, to play stronger up. And I think Sancho is just such an exciting element yeah. that he can play on the right, on the left, and sometimes he'll probably drop in in the number 10. There's going to be a loss of goals for this United team. You know something, Kelsey? You could see that with, the, with the, the top teams now, the top four teams, whatever it is, or whoever they play, if Man United just say, right, let's just have it out, we'll duke it out with you, 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 like Chelsea or City or, or whoever it is, with that team and that defence, you'd have to say you'd fancy Man United against any of them. If they say, OK, let's just go for it, you know, like two boxers right in the middle of the ring. And you'd have to fancy Man United as, as much as anybody simply because of the players they've got that can make things happen in the moment. Yeah, yeah. and it, do you know what? As much as you look forward to those games as occasions over the past couple of seasons, you were, oh, there was all the back of your mind, you were thinking, this is not going to be a yeah. good game. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but now, yeah. you're looking ahead to this season and you think, this could be fun. You, you have to. I think in, in Manchester United's case, if they genuinely believe they're going to win the league, you've got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those boys. Mm. There's no point in trying to nick a point off yeah. Man City or Lille. There's no point. You've got to nick the three points. No, especially if you're at home. If you go away and you get a point, you've got four you points. You know that time in the game, and when you're playing, when you think to yourself, right, we've done our bit, we, let's get the point now. Yeah. I remember playing against them, and you could see that with United, where they said, right, they, they, they will hammer at you. And then it's like, bam, bam, bam. And then all of a sudden, they'll just go, bam, they'll take the point, because they know that next week they're going to beat, beat a team. That's what I want to see the United do, simply because that's what I used to see them do. They come, and they are coming for your throat. And then if that doesn't happen, they do not lose. Yeah. Mm. And, that, and we're going back to all these similarities from, for the Manchester United team now to the ones that, that were successful. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, obviously, a big part of that in, in the past. And he knows what that takes. The, do you think his reputation is, is growing? I, you know, um, I think he's, people are starting to respect him now. You know, yep, he's not won a trophy. I, I understand that. And people keep saying, oh, it's a massive season for him this season. Of course he is, just like any manager. But I think now people are looking at Oli and saying, right, he knows what he wants. He knows where Manchester United are trying to get to and he's bringing the right players. Now, can he get Manchester United, so to speak, over the line by winning silverware? And what he's accumulating at the moment, I'm, I'm very, very excited mm -hmm. about this season. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not going to sit and say, oh, yeah, we're going to do X, Y, Z. But really excited about what we have. Yeah. I mean, there's an argument that regardless of what happens, he was absolutely the right man at the right time. For, for Manchester United, whether you know he's the, the man to get them over the line in, in terms of silverware, we don't know until he's won a trophy. But for the man to go in, change the atmosphere, change the mentality, change the dynamic to make it more recognisably Manchester United, he absolutely was the right person. He's a genuinely surprising coach in that every time I think he's reached his limit, mm. he comes up with something new or he yeah. gets that good result and you're going, oh, OK, maybe, maybe there's something left in your back pocket. And I think his interim period was very much, let's just do it like we did on the Ferguson. And then there was sort of a year, year and a half where I wasn't quite sure what he was planning. And I think I came on here and I said, I have yeah. to squint and tilt my head and then I can yeah. figure it out. I don't think you have to squint anymore. We know what this United team want. They want to play quick counter-attacking football. They are going to put in loads of crosses when Anderson Cavani comes in. They are going to be really hard to break down in defence because they've got Varane and they've got Maguire, two players who are very good in their 1v1 yeah. duels. Like, this all makes sense in a way that hasn't made sense at Manchester United since perhaps Ferguson's retirement. 
and he deserves an incredible amount of credit for that. And that is probably why he's got that contract extension. I think as, I think as well, Kels, I remember saying um, the, what, what Oli's brought to Man United is that it feels like how I feel our Man United should be and how they're respected now. He's taking his time to get around that. And I have to agree with Carl when Carl said, sometimes you think, well, what, what, what are you playing? You know what I mean? What are you playing? But you can look at this team now, the way they played against Leeds and say, OK, I get it now because he's got the personnel. So I remember saying it was vibes, you know what I mean? The Man United fans continually come for me with that one. <laughs> and they're right to, because like, now you look at it, he's, he's brought Man United back to how people see Man United. Um, and I think that there's going to be a fear with them now. And what Oli's doing is giving them the opportunity to just go, go and do it. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. So when you couldn't recognise it before, it's because pro probably the players and that don't do what we want. Yeah. You want to see them go, go in and do it. So then you say, oh, so someone like me will say, oh, look, it's just vibes. I don't know what you're doing. Like Carl will say, I'm trying to work out what they're doing. When you've got the right players and they go and do it, you see what they're doing. Now I can see what they're doing. The, 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 the quick breaking, the, the quality players, the moment, the quality players in the moments that create something, bam, before you know it, you're two, three nil down yeah. against them. And That's that, the team yeah. you used to play. Yeah, exactly. The good thing is now they can play counter-attack mm. football. You can't always rely on that. Mm -hmm. but I think now we can still play that, but we can play. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can't you, to win a league. You can't play counter attack football. You can't do it for 38 games. You can't do it. So you got to play as well. And like you said, we're Oli's trying to get to now. Yeah, if we're gonna play the quick break, we've got the place to do it. Yeah. But we can play as well, and that's what Man United have to do. Yeah. See Manchester City losing their their opening game of the season against Tottenham. A lot of the sides towards the, the top end of the table last time around have strengthened over the over the summer. So there's probably going to be points dropped. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be. Judging on one <laughs> game <laughs> and over the summer, you, you would suspect that there isn't going to be one of those pushing 100-point kind of seasons because those big teams will be able to, to challenge in a, yeah. in a much closer way. So does that open the door for Manchester United, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that you, you say that, Kells, but if Man United can play like that, um, and like you say, it is the first game, they'll probably, they can beat and give any, anyone around them a good game and then... It's, it's those games that Man United used to struggle against, the low block teams, the teams that frustrate Man United. You know, those are the teams that um, Man United have to win, beat, beat, I should say. And if they do that, I could see Man United beating the top teams and then and, and just dealing with those teams, dealing with the teams underneath them because they have to get those points rather than lose, not lose, get a draw, but like they will probably beat those teams. I still feel it's going to be tough for someone to go to that 100 points, but... I feel that the confidence that they're in, it's, you, you don't know what can happen.